As a reminder, please silence all cell phones. Welcome to today's press conference for the Iowa State Cyclones. Iowa State Sports Information Director is Sarah Dyson. Today we are joined by head coach Bill Fenley and student athletes Audie Crooks and Emily Ryan. Coach Fenley, would you like to make an opening statement? Um, first of all, I, I thought that was one of the most entertaining games I've ever been a part of, uh, certainly for the NCAA tournament. Uh, certainly so proud of our team, um, ecstatic for them. A uh, little down because of Brenda and, and how well her team played, but uh, just a tremendous effort and uh, really proud of the way we showed some fight in the second half and made just enough shots to beat a really good team. We'll now take questions for the student athletes. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, please use the raise hand function and I will call on you if we have time. Tommy Birch, Des Moines, Rochester. Emily, I saw you pointing out something on the stab sheet to Adi, what were, what were you pointing out just there? Uh, I mean, she dropped 40 on 20 shots. That's uh, pretty eye-popping right there. So um, it was a special night for her, but <coughs> as well as our team, but couldn't have happened to a better person, and I'm really glad that I get to share the court with her. That's what you were kind of pointing out to her right now, yeah. how many made field goals? Honey, this one's for you, Michelle Smith from the next. Can, you guys were down by 20 with 128 left in the half, first half. What was the conversation at halftime? And as you guys started chipping away at it, what was your confidence level that you guys would be able to pull this off? Um, <clears throat> at halftime, coach just kind of told us, you know, what we do is up to us. The way that this falls, if this is how we want to go out, then that's up to us. What happens on the floor is, is our responsibility. It's our fault. You know, they can't play the game for us. And it was just a, a matter of pride, just knowing that we weren't playing to our best abilities and then going out there and showing what we can do. And we did that. Hey, hey, y'all. Kareem Copeland from the Washington Post. This one's for you, Audie. Um, kind of a two-parter. Sure. I saw you before the game, you kind of were off to the side during warm-ups and you kind of closed your eyes and kind yeah. of had a, took a breath, took a moment to yourself. Sure. Kind of what's going through your mind at that point and then as the game's going on and you're cooking, um, mm -hmm. what's that feeling, what's going through that, through your mind as you're having that much success? Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> um, before every game, I just try to take a moment um, and I pray, and I uh, am kind of seeking guidance from my father. He passed away when I was 16 in 2021. So uh, I just try to, to kind of take a second and ground myself and, and uh, tap into my uh, spiritual side and just know that everything's going to be okay and he's got the best seat in the house. Um, and I'm, excuse me, what was the second part of that question? I'm sorry. Just as the game was going on, you know, what was working so well? And yeah. Um... Uh, during the second half, no, you're good. During the second half, we uh, switched up the defensive plan a little bit, and I think we brought a lot more intensity, and that was working for us. We started rebounding a lot better. I think we got out rebounded in the first half, and then the guards did a phenomenal job. I can't praise them enough of getting the ball inside. I don't score if they don't pass me the ball. So this is a big night, not for me, but for Iowa State. And then before the next question, as a reminder, there's no filming during the press conference except by the designated team delegate. Emily, this one's for you. Ben Gaffner, WMUC Sports. 14 assists today. Can you talk about the passing throughout, especially in that second half, and how you guys were so effective getting it to Audi, getting it to three-point shooters out there on the perimeter, and what made you guys so effective in um, you know, coming back down 20? Yeah, I think that's just kind of a credit to the attention that Audi draws inside. When we throw it in there, she goes and gets it every time, and uh, she finishes so well. And then when, when she gets rolling, they have to suck inside. And so then the skip shots are open, and the shooters were knocking them down in the second half. And so um, people were executing really well in the second half. And that's just kind of a credit to where the coaches put us in, put us in the right spots, and um, put us in place so that we can be successful. This one's for Emily. Emily, was it a matter of um, – getting better three-point looks in the second half or shots that maybe weren't falling in the first half were falling in the second? 
Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. I thought we were getting better looks in the second half. Kind of started when we got an offensive rebound and an easy kick out three is kind of when our momentum started rolling for us. And so I think when we're able to make extra plays, um, effort plays are what really drives this team. And so um, I thought Kelsey came in and was a huge spark for us. And she made huge plays for us. Uh, obviously, it doesn't always show up on the stat sheet, everything she contributes to the team. But um, she was a huge spark for us today and got our momentum going. And so I think that was a big part of it. Adi, how much did you know um, you would accomplish tonight in terms of, you know, how many field goals she had, <coughs> how many points and stuff like that up until Emily showed you? Um, I pretty much had zero knowledge. We don't accomplish anything until the buzzer sounds. That's kind of how I look at it. So we just needed to finish the job regardless of who has how many of whatever. So what's, what's your reaction to, you know, having that type of production tonight? It, reach some historic levels for Iowa State. Sure. Um, to get me the ball, that, that speaks volumes to, to how we play as a unit. And uh, yeah. rate uh, coming out of halftime on to erase that 16-point deficit in seven minutes. Did you guys take anything that you may have learned in that Baylor comeback earlier this year or a couple other games? Uh, or was it anything that Bill or the other coaches had to say at halftime? Yeah, I think uh, this one, more so than technical basketball stuff, this was more so, more so a, um, a visual representation of the character on this team and how connected we are. And we're, we're going to go through it together, whether it's um, riding the highs or battling through the lows. And so we just stayed connected. There was a lot of belief throughout. And um, when it comes to March, you want to keep playing. You want to be able to show up the next day and continue to be around this team because it's something special and you don't want it to end. And so that's something that you want to really remember when you're playing. And you don't want the season to end for your seniors because it's their last, their last go around too. And so just trying to extend the season as long as possible so you can um, make more memories in March. Alex Simon from SFK. Audi, it seemed like there was a few times in the second half especially where you were almost smiling even before you're inside the three-point line. What was the, what's the feeling like when you're almost so confident that even without the ball, it's like, if this is, is this like a confidence thing? If I, if I get the ball, I know it's two points. Not necessarily that. Just uh, kind of taking what Coach Fenn said in the locker room. Like, you don't get to do this again. The time, you don't get the time back. So, I mean, you can feel sorry for yourself and say we're down 20, hang your head and give up. Or you can smile, enjoy it. And, and take every play with, with grace and, and utilize that to your advantage. And that's just what I try to do. This next question will be the last question for the student athletes. Hi, Adi. I am Janie McCauley from Associated Press. Um, were, were you nervous at all for this? I mean, this big stage. I mean, you've been, you've been playing some big games for a while, but um, you just seemed kind of to touch on what Alex said, just seemed so calm. And even if you're first shot didn't go in you, you, you made, created a second chance and just, just didn't ever seem phased out there by their big lead or, or anything. Right. Um, I kind of pride myself on being like a cool, calm, collected person. The most emotion you'll see out of me is when I'm celebrating or, or somebody makes a big shot. I'll be going crazy in, in that case. But it's just super important, I think, and it's, it's not talked about enough, the importance of body language in basketball. That tells a lot about your, your team, yourself, your culture, um, and just to be able to control your emotions and to fight through adversity, it's not talked about enough. And that's just something that I value, that this team values, and that everybody should value. <laughs> Sorry, and to, to place the name, we saw a quick glimpse on TV of you getting to place the, the nameplate on the on the bracket into the next round. I mean, did that? What did that feel like? That was so fun. Um, my teammates soaked me in water. I'm sorry, whoever sits in this chair next, but um, it it was just a lot of fun, and uh, I'm just excited to be able to to have another game with with these girls, with this group. This is a special team, and I just didn't want it to end. Thank you. Thank you, Audie and Emily. You can rejoin your teammates in the locker room. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll now take questions for Coach Fenley. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, you please use the raise hand function and we'll call on you if we have time. Hi, Coach. Michelle Smith from The Next. Hello. With a young team, to, they don't have a lot of history or context about going down in an NCAA tournament game and not coming back, whatever. Was this your halftime speech? Is it easier with a younger team because they don't have a lot of history to go on? No, I think that that's a great point. Uh, they don't know what they don't know. 
and I think you can tell with Audie's personality, and they just go play. And, and our, our the message at halftime was there wasn't really a basketball discussion. It was more about, you know, we talk when we leave the building, is your head up or your eyes open? Do you have a smile on your face? And is your heart full? Because you did your best. And we did not do our best in the first half. That's a credit to Maryland. And that's all I said. You know, when you walk out, the, the scoreboard is going to go dark, but you're going to take some things with you. And I think they just made that decision in the second half. Obviously, the game changes when you make some shots. But our freshmen have been that way all year. They really have. This, the stage just doesn't seem too big for them. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens Sunday but, or whatever day we play. But uh, they've handled it that way all year. Tommy Birch, Des Moines Register. Bill, where does Audie's performance tonight rank in terms of individual accomplishments that you've seen during your time here? Well, I, I would say it's obviously one of the best I've ever seen considering the points, the efficiency, the venue, the event. Probably the last one I saw was on the other way when Jane Appel put 46 on us in a regional game. That was probably the last time I, I saw it, something like that. But, I, you know, we've had a lot of great performances, but I think when you just – in its totality, it's it was pretty impressive. Hey, Coach, Ben Geffner, WMUC Sports. What was it like going against Coach Fries, former assistant coach, first time Maryland and Iowa State have faced off in program history for both teams? What was that like, regardless win, lose, or draw? What was that experience like? Awful. I, 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 it just, it's awful. I mean, Brenda's, in my, Brenda's part of my family, and, you know, you just – as excited as you are for your players and your fans, you, you look down at the other bench and their emotions are a little different right now. So I, I know that's what the tournament's about and it's a story, but it's, yeah, it was awful. Bill, can you talk about the emphasis all season on your players getting the ball to Audie in a position where she can be successful? I mean, the passes, they really know where to get her the ball so that right. she's got a good look. No, we, we worked really hard on that. Early in the year, we weren't, we weren't real sure of the best way to go about it. And I think what happens is um, because of the position she can get, Audie can, it has amazing hands. So they, they'll, like, it's like a wide receiver. It's like my man Austin Arnott used to throw – to Iowa State receivers, it's like, hey, I know my guy's going to catch it. Um, and we have multiple people that can make the passes. I mean, obviously, Emily does most of it. But Addie Brown's been really good. And when people spread the court on us. So we, we spend a great – and for us, it's been a learning curve because we haven't had a true low post player in our program for 25 years. And so it's been something we've all had to learn. Uh, and Audie's been really patient with us. She's patient with her teammates. And, uh, you know, we, we stole a lot of stuff, just simple stuff from what they did in high school. You know, how do they get her to the ball? What's the angle? So it's not anything big, but it's something that we've had to really adapt into our team. Uh, hey, Coach. Aiden Curry, WMUC Sports. Um, Audie mentioned a defensive switch that you guys made, um, probably, I believe, after the first quarter. Um, and it looked like Maryland were getting a lot of open threes in that first quarter. Can you kind of speak on what exactly that defensive switch was that allowed you to shut down their offense the rest of the way? Yeah, in the first half, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the scouting report uh, death for an assistant coach when Ellie Kubek goes seven for eight from the three-point line. She's made 13 all season. Um, that is, like, the worst thing ever. Uh, so we had a hard time guarding her because they were picking and popping, and Audie doesn't guard in space a lot. Uh, second half, we, we switched a lot more. We kept Audie around the basket. We tried to, to chase a couple shooters and then gap the other guys. Nothing. It wasn't anything crazy. We just made the decision to keep Audie closer to the basket and rotate around her rather than the first half. We were trying to play it a little more straight up. And Brenda ran some good stuff. And, you know, yeah, I think there was one time someone on our bench goes, she's got to miss once. I think it, I think she was seven for seven or something. It was incredible. And two or three of them, I don't think the net moved. It was, it was she was so open. So that was the big adjustment. It, it helps us because we can keep people close to the basket. And our goal was to not let them shoot a lot of free throws. 
and guard certain people, which means someone else is open. And, you know, the, the threes that, that Allie got, that's my fault. That was the game plan to guard the free throw line and the other kids. And to her credit and Brenda's credit, they, they made us pay for it early. Hi, Bill. Janie McCauley from Hi. AP. Um, Adi just spoke about body language and the importance of, you know, having a joy and just being, hey. being, you know, a good sport out there. And she, she showed that. Um, how, how do you think she is so poised at such a young age and, and to, to do that and honor her father and all the things yeah. she's gone through? Well, I think, first of all, if you met her mother, uh, you'd know. Uh, her mother's an amazing woman. Uh, Audie grew up in a small town in Iowa, private school, and I think has been someone that was completely embraced by the community. Uh, she knew at an early age, I think, that she was going to be viewed and, and had, had the opportunity to do some things. I mean, she sang, she played, like every place we go on the road, she's playing the drums and shoot around. She, you know, she, she's just one of those people. And I mean, you listen to her speak at 18 years old, it's, it's incredible. Uh, but it, it's it's her mother. It's her it's her belief in her faith, and um, you know she actually committed us shortly after her father passed, and I think that was the thing that she really felt was something that she wanted to do. Uh, he was an Iowa State fan growing up, and that probably was a big big thing. But she's like that all the time. She's always smiling. She loves life, and uh, it's been it's been good for all of us, especially this old guy that's in the fourth quarter of his career. So it's fun to be around someone like that every day. Thank you. Quick two-parter. Um, the question I asked Emily about three-point shots, better look, better shots and better looks in the second half or knocking them down? And then um, I read that you frequented a restaurant that Adi liked as part of the recruiting process. Yes. Will you share the name of the restaurant? Yes, uh, Cinco de Mayo. I don't even like Mexican food. <laughs> but when you're recruiting Audie Crooks, you go to the Mexican restaurant um, a lot. Uh, and uh, th as far as the shots go, I think we did have better looks in the second half because they were kind of collapsing a little bit more. And, and I think the other thing that happens is for us, you can get a transition three once in a while. We finally stopped them maybe once or twice and got a transition. Like, it's tough to get a transition basket or a good look when you're taking the ball in the net all the time. So we finally got some stops, ran it up the court, and hit a skip pass or two. Kelsey, uh, Hannah hit some big ones. Emily hit some. So I think it was more coming off of our defense being better. Thank you, Coach, and good luck on Sunday. Thank you all for your time. Really appreciate we'll it. We'll now have a short break and be back with Maryland's press conference. Iowa State's locker room is open until 714.